Welcome back to The Watch List. I'm Nicole Petalides. It's time for Options Corner, where we analyze unusual options trades that we've been seeing throughout the day. Tom White, host of Fast Market here on Schwab Network, is with us. You have a tech theme. You're also seeing a lot of bullish trades, I noticed. And Supermicro is on your radar. I thought it was interesting that you found this bullish play because it hit this high of 1229. And then it's been in somewhat of a channel of late, um, bopping around, you know, neither highs nor lows. I, I'm interested to hear what kind of options activity you're finding. Yeah, Nicole, uh, if you take a look at it, it's pulled back from those all-time highs, uh, maybe a little bit of over-exuberance on that. But then remember some of the AI names, including NVIDIA, pulled back from their all-time highs. Uh, also still up about 9% today, up over 220% per so far this year. They've got earnings on the 6th of August, so that'll be a, a potential catalyst moving forward. But this is that company, you know, it's been around for, what, three decades but now that you've got the AI build out and the infrastructure and the need for somebody to build these servers uh, using the AI technology, Supermicro is back in the spotlight here over the last year and a half or so. Uh, you know, they basically build those customizable building block uh, architecture of these AI servers and they're highly customizable. You know, they're partnering with NVIDIA. Uh, AMD, Intel, among others in the chip space. So, yeah, a uh, future looking pretty bright for this company. And you can look at the uh, reaction to the stock uh, so far this year, and that kind of proves it. If you looked at their last quarter on earnings, revenue surged 200% year over year to just below $4 billion, while earnings per share jumped over 300%. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of call activity in here on a daily basis. Call volume today about two and a half times normal daily average volume that we've seen over the last week of trading and no different today. Uh, one of the uh, strikes that kind of stuck out to me uh, today was in the July 12th weekly cycle. So really short term positioning on the 900 strike call. Trader bought over 5,000 of those. Paid an average debit of about $32. So a hefty option premium they're paying for these calls. Uh, because there is such high implied volatility uh, in this name. But that break even of 932 over the next four days of trading, that's only about a percent above the current share price as the stock has continued to move higher. So once again, a lot of call activity uh, in this name on a daily basis. It's a high price stock. Maybe, uh, you know, during that earnings event, they come out and split the shares. That's been uh, the norm lately for a lot of these tech companies that have had a high share price, maybe making it more accessible. But, yeah, the bulls keep piling into calls on this one. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, we're seeing all, also Morgan Stanley raise the price targets on Taiwan Semi. Um, the group overall getting a nice little boost today. I mean, we know that the NASDAQ, and we're going to get to the XLK in a moment, but uh, you know, you think about tech related stocks and how we're at these new highs. So there is some optimism and pot positive cues um, surrounding these types of names. All right. Well, thank you for that one. Mm -hmm. And then the big picture on tech, you're looking at the XLK, the tech ETF. Some thoughts there. Yeah. If you take a look at this one, it's more, uh, you know, pure based tech play. You know, a lot of people trade the QQQs uh, for tech. That's basically the NASDAQ 100, but there's a lot of retail names in there. There's Starbucks in there. There's some names that you wouldn't think that would be in a tech-heavy ETF. XLK is the one that is solely focused on tech names. And if you look at the re after the rebalance at the end of June, the biggest components in there, Microsoft is over 22%. NVIDIA is now over 20%. They flip spaces with Apple, which is now just below 5% of the ETF holdings. And then AVGO and AMD round out the top five. So the two big names, Microsoft and NVIDIA, are the load within uh, this particular ETF uh, representing the technology sector in the S&P 500. And typically we don't see a lot of call volume in this name, uh, in this ETF. Uh, so. For example, only about 9,000 calls have traded throughout the entire session today uh, in there, but that's still nearly three times normal daily average volume that we've seen over the last five trading days. So even little positions in XLK kind of stick out to me. And one that, uh, that kind of uh, raised my eyebrows was out in the August 2nd weekly cycle. So you're going to capture some of the tech earnings that come out uh, uh, in uh, to this option expiration on this one. A trader bought over 3,000 of the 235 strike calls in there. Average debit of about $5.40. So that break even of 
240, 40 over the next 25 days. That's only about two and a half percent above the current share price. Uh, of XLK in there. And as I mentioned, you know, not a lot of calls traded in there today. This position alone was one third of the total volume across all option series in there today. It's interesting. I mean, and you have until August 2nd uh, for that trade. I mean, these are real trades, folks. I mean, these are not example trades that Tom's bringing to us. So it shows the optimism, at least for that group. Yeah. We still are believers. I was saying earlier how uh, folks had FOMO and even a name like Tesla, which sort of was almost uh, out of the mag seven. People were disinterested in Tesla. But look at that. It was, certainly came back. It had this win streak and soars higher. Now, once again, people are discussing the valuation in a big way. Um, but you found another bullish trade. Yeah, in Tesla. And, you know, that'll happen, Nicole, when people want to kick it out of the, uh, you know, the Magnificent Seven, and then it rallies nine straight sessions. It's up 40% in that time frame, kind of puts everything back on the radar. Now, you got to remember, uh, you know, Tesla still has some short interest built, built up in it. There was some uh, some commentary and some data that was thrown out there today. Short sellers were hit with $5.7 billion of unrealized losses last week when the stock rallied 27%. Uh, that uh, year-to-date loss is $1.7 billion, ac according to Ortex Technologies. 3.84% uh, uh, short, uh, short open interest in this name. So that's kind of uh, getting to the high side for Tesla, but maybe getting a little bit of a short squeeze here. Uh, on that, you know, had they had their delivery numbers last week that were a little bit better than expected. Still down year over year, but better than the street expected. And then you've got earnings on the 23rd. That's going to be a catalyst. Uh, maybe we'll get some more clarity on the humanoids. And then August 8th, uh, you've got the uh, the big robo taxi event that everybody's excited for. Uh, and that might be that next silo of revenue generation for them if they can roll that out, start licensing it to the OEMs and uh, some of the others in the tech space. You, you got to remember all the data that Tesla has gathered since they started selling these EVs. But uh, yeah, uh, Dan Ives last week raised his price target to 300. He's kind of downbeat on him for a few quarters. Now starting to reverse that trend along with a lot of other analysts. But one, uh, one item of uh, unusual option activity that kind of stuck out to me because of the massive size of the position, the open interest position, that they're taking in this one uh, was out in the September 230 strike calls. They bought 68,000 of those for an average debit of just under 40 bucks, 39.75 on these. So that break even is 269.75 over the next 74 days. That's about 7% above the current share price. Now, they didn't just initiate this position. They rolled out of an existing position that's been working well. They were along the, the August 200 strike calls. They sold out of over 50,000 of those calls, they re-upped their position. They went out to the September cycle. So they gave themselves another month on this one uh, as far as positioning goes. Over 1.7 million calls have traded on the day in there. That's about uh, double normal daily average volume that we've seen over the last five trading sessions. Put call ratio, about 0.5. So that means uh, for every 1.7 million calls that have traded, only about 850,000 puts have traded on the day. So all the positioning is to the bullish side, but Tesla's had a really big range today as far as pricing goes, about $10 uh, either way. It was negative for a while, it was positive, but uh, yeah, trying to stretch this into a, a streak of 10 straight sessions to the upside here for Tesla's and the, the bulls are out here in the calls. Yeah, and you know, the feeling is, is so wonderful, like it's all so great, and that's why there's been a lot of FOMO and run and things are running up against new highs. But really, when you look at the S&P 500, just 17 percent of those names have, in fact, outperformed um, over the last 30 days, have outperformed the index itself. And so it just shows you how narrow of a trade it really is, because this is the lowest share in at least a decade. Yeah, so hey, it still shows you they're just certain names that are outperformers. Yeah, and one item of note, like if you look at, when I look at the, the S&P 500 at all-time highs, right, typically that means it's a broad-based rally. This rally's actually gotten narrower, where uh, one of the gauges I look at is the number of companies or percentage of companies above their 50-day moving average in the S&P 500. It's only at 42% right now, and that's with the index 
at all time highs. So you can see the impact that a few names in the S&P 500 can have on the overall benchmark uh, index. Yeah, that's another great example of exactly what's going on and how yeah. narrow it was. You know, there was a moment where we were saying, oh, it's more broad based, uh, market breadth had improved, but I um, feel like, yeah, we're saying the same thing here about this is not so broad based. Yeah. Tom White. Thank you. Good Thanks. to see you. Thank you. Nice options corner for everybody today. SMCI, we looked at the XLK for tech and Tesla as well.